Hello and welcome to World of History, the show that dives into the past to uncover the secrets of ancient cultures. This week we're looking at the fearsome Vikings. We'll have a couple of Viking guests in the studio and we'll even see how they fought. But first, a bit of background. The Vikings ruled the seas of Northern Europe just over a thousand years ago. They were excellent at making boats which enabled them to travel long distances. They were fearsome warriors too, plundering settlements for treasure that they could later trade with other cultures. Weirdly, not an awful lot is known about them since they never bothered to write much down, so most of what we know is from what other people wrote of them. And because a lot of them were on the receiving end of their plundering, well, they didn't have the nicest reputation. Now, we're joined in the studio by two Viking warriors who are here to talk a bit about their culture. Gentlemen, welcome to the studio. We have Rafi and Eric from the Vanaheim Vikings. Um, can you just tell us a bit what the Van Vanaheim Vikings are? Absolutely. Um, we are a reenactment group that is part of the Vikings, um, which is the Greater UK Society, one of the biggest reenactment societies uh, probably in the world, actually. And we focus mainly on Vikings and Saxon culture, uh, so living history and fighting. So um, just looking at you both right now, obviously you, you both are wearing very different things. Could you tell me a little bit about uh, the garb you're wearing? Well, there would have been a lot of differences in the way Vikings would have looked based upon their standing within society. Eric here, who is the uh, Sturesman of our group, is representing a high status Viking. He's got a lot of deep colours, a lot of jewellery, a lot of ornamentation. My kit represents a more low status Viking. It's a bit dirty, it, it's been repaired, because I, I would have wanted my clothing to last longer, I couldn't have afforded to buy new things. The colours are a bit more light, a bit more washed out. In that era, pink would have been achieved as a dye from using the second dye of, of a red dye, which right. would have been much more expensive. So if somebody was looking at getting into these sort of reenactment things that you guys are doing, how would they go around sort of sourcing this sort of thing? It's not something you'd find in the high street, really. Yeah, I mean, the best way is really to come and see us or any other period you want at the reenactment event and then just going up and talking to them and saying that you want to be involved. and generally speaking, we'll point you to the closest group to where you're from, um, and then just with a card or whatever, and that's it, really. Yeah. So, um, a bit later on, you guys are going to be doing a bit of a, um, a battle yes. sort of tutorial with us. Um, can you just talk us through a, a, an item or two that you've got here on the table? Uh, absolutely, yeah. Um, I mean, I think we should start with the obvious, obviously, um, with the sword, or in this case, Norwegian Langsey Axe, which was the weapon for killing. Um, so very high status, not everyone would have one. In fact, very few people would have one. Yeah. Um, it shows one more. Me as a, as a lower status warrior, mm. I would have fought with a, a hand axe or spear. Requires much less metal, much less craftsmanship to make. Mm. And uh, so it would be much easier and cheaper for me to obtain it. Right. However, obviously it doesn't come with the same uh, devastating power of the yeah. sword. That's great, thank you very much guys. So, uh, in a few moments we will be shown a few fighting moves by these two Vikings, but first here are a couple of things you might not know about our Norse friends. Did you know that the Vikings actually discovered North America almost 500 years before Christopher Columbus? Remains of a Viking settlement have been discovered in Newfoundland, part of northern Canada. Also, the word Viking roughly translates to pirate raid in their native language. There are some common myths about the Vikings that might not actually be true. For example, they never had horns on their helmets. So, we are now ready to see some proper Viking combat. So, tell me gents, how did the Vikings fight? Right, well, the, one of the main things for Viking combat was the shield. See, most people in the war would have had one, or when raiding would have had one. Um, so, round shield, flat. And the boss, there's a variety of bosses, but that is the most found in the UK. And that's the thing? Yeah, it protects your hand, and it works as a pivotal point as well for various techniques when it comes to shield work. Um, and so that would have been replicated. Everyone would have had one at the front line, and they, they would be overlapped fairly tightly, and then that would be your unit, essentially. OK. Uh, and that would hold the enemy at bay advancing, stabbing, yeah. and stuff. So if you just want to show, like, uh, the item that you've got in your hand there, what is it? Absolutely. This is my preferred weapon on the field. 
It's a 200 spear. It's a bit of a short one, but that is perfect for going in between the shields, stabbing at the enemy, or from above, stabbing at the enemy as well. Getting into those tight legs. holes. Yeah, exactly. There's evidence in uh, the sagas and other uh, particularly literary sources shows that this was a very common and um, very deadly weapon on, on the battlefield. Right, mm -hmm. okay, so I understand you're going to show me a few moves? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So, I guess this is the only thing between me and that big pointy thing. Absolutely. Right, so basically, what I can do, especially if you're not in a shield wall, mm -hmm. is I can use the pivotal point of the axis that makes the shield handle push and open you up. Right. So either in a shield wall, if I have the opportunity, I'll open you up and another spearman or sword or axe will get you on that side. Same on this side. So I suppose the, the guy with the weak shield would be opening his friends up to being attacked rather exactly, than... Exactly, yeah. And there's ways around it. If you have lots of spears, you can overlap the shields in a different way, such that your arm is in the way of one pressure point and your person next to you, his arm is in the way of that other pressure point. Or even twisting your wrist slightly can make it harder for me to do so. Now, realistically, mm -hmm. if you're having a round shield like that, I will go for your shin. So or for your face. That would be where the shield wall comes into play with, I suppose, multiple shields upwards, maybe? Uh, you can do that. Yeah, it does happen. But from what I know, it's mostly been used for like when there's like showers of arrows uh, and the like. Basically, what you really want to do is make sure that you have other pole arms mm -hmm. and that the distance between me as the attacker and you as the defender is beyond my reach. And that you hope that somebody else has a bigger stick than I do. So stay um, out the way, have a longer reach than the opponent, and hopefully exactly. you'll, you'll come out of it a bit, a bit In better. In that way, the, the real integrity of the shield wall came from all elements working together. Yeah. So you've got your, you know, your basic swordsman, axeman, you've got your shield. You're being supported on either side by other similar so men. Viking warfare was really all about teamwork, you'd say. Yeah, yeah. pretty yeah. much. That's great. So. Uh, well, that's all we have time for today. A uh, big thank you to both of our Viking guests. Um, next time, we're going to be looking at the Romans. We'll see you then.